All right, third graders, welcome back. We are going to begin to do some watercoloring today. Now, this is what we'll do first. We're going to read this story called Owl Moon. I really like this story. It has a really nice winter theme to it. Um, and it was given the Caldecat Medal for its illustrations. And this book was written by Jane Yolen and illustrated by John Schoenher. And I really do like the watercolor illustrations that are in this book. Um, he's done a very nice job. And so that, after reading this story, I thought let's try our own hand at uh, making um, landscape illustrations using watercolor. This is a really nice book. So we'll be reading that first and then we will be going about um, doing our watercolors. Now you will be given an opportunity to look through a set of images um, that I have available at the supply table. You choose an image. Now if you find one that you don't like, you can always go back and get a different one. But we're going to initially find an image that is interesting to us of a landscape. Okay, So you're going to pick out one of those. Then you're going to draw it out lightly. So here I have a landscape that I think is really nice. It's got some nice color and a lot of nice things. Now I am going to only draw out just the general shapes. If you can see here on this image here, it has a horizon line. This is where the sky meets the land or the sky meets the water. And in this case there's a straight line and it's up a ways from the bottom of the page. So I'm going to find that line and create it. Okay, I'm going to turn this around and draw that line across. And that gives me a marker of where that shape is. I also have a little bit of a, a cloud here. I also have this um, basically tree line where it meets the water. So I'm going to try to draw that out the way I see it. Okay. Then I have, these are the mainly what I'm drawing out is the main shapes. I now have this line along here that I can incorporate into this painting. So I'm going to find out where that is and I'm going to kind of put those shapes in. I can put in trees. I wouldn't put a lot of detail. I would just kind of give yourself an indication of where the trees are. You don't have to draw the entire tree in with all its branches because you can also be doing that with watercolor. And so you just kind of want a light pencil drawing, drawing in maybe some of the basic shapes in that landscape. And then you're going to begin to paint. Now there may be things in your image that you might not like. Let's say there's a car or a building in here and there's a lot of them and you think well I don't want that many buildings. You can decide that to take buildings out or you can decide in this case there's no buildings, there's no vehicles or anything like that. And If that's something that you want in your picture you can add it. I don't mind. If you want to add a building over here or um, maybe a, a tree over here, it feels like it needs that. That is what I call artistic license and I welcome you to utilize that those decisions. All right, so um, now, now we're going to begin painting. So I'm going to be at your table. You'll have at least four of these paint trays at your tables and that means that they can stay in the center and you can share them. There may be a case where you're low on a color and I haven't gotten around to replace it um, and I don't have time during class to replace it. So you have four trays at your tables that you can utilize and you share them with your table mates and if you're low on a color, the ones closest to you, you can use the color over here for some, another, another person's tray. Um, so put them all in the middle and share them. Also, um, whenever you're working with watercolor and you are creating and mixing some colors, let's say I want to create this pinkish color along the sky, I need a pink. Well, I often get, well, Mrs. Davidson, there isn't a pink. Now that's what's nice about watercolor. If you use a lot of water with the watercolors, you get a light pink, a light red and that's what pink is, light red. If you use a lot of water, you get a, lot, a lighter color. If you lose a lot of paint, you get a darker color. And I'm mixing it in this tray and I welcome you to do that. Just at the end of the class, I would take a paper towel and just kind of dab that clean again. All right, so I'm using this tray because I want a light red 
and I'm going to just basically paint that in, that light red along the, the top there. Now, this is called a graded wash. And when you are creating a, uh, a painting like this and you want to get some color going like that and you want it to gradually get lighter or darker, you basically add more water or more paint if you want it to get darker, okay? This actually gradually goes into kind of an orange color, so I'm going to add that right onto my paper. I can also mix colors right here. So if I need an orangey red, I will add orange to my red there, and I can add that and keep going. Now this had a little bit of a cloud there. Now if the cloud was white, I would leave it white where the white of the paper is, okay? And just kind of work around it because I don't have a white in my paper, but my paper is white, so I'm going to leave this cloud right there white. Now, you can, I do want you to also, if you're gonna mix any colors in your paint tray here, I want you to share the space with others, as well as whenever you dip into one color, I want you to, and you utilize it, I want you first, ah, uh, not that, I first want you to rinse, and then if you decide you want to add a little another color to it, you add that color. But as you can see even there, I got a little bit of blue in that yellow. Now this, this already, my water's getting dirty and I welcome you to go ahead and go over to the sink and dump it and get yourself some fresh water whenever you need it, okay? And that is fine with me. Just be careful, don't spill it. Okay, so we are painting. Now, I am going to just go over some basics of painting for you to a uh, little common issues that you may come across one of them is this oh mrs davidson i didn't mean to put that there uh now this is one way you won't be able to erase a mistake like that on purpose but you can dab it up and you can get it kind of wet again and slightly remove it don't go too crazy with water on your paper because this paper will tear if you go crazy but I can at least remove it enough that I can paint over it with the color. This is going to be green anyway, so now I can go over it with a green. Maybe in this area I'll decide, oh, that might be a good place for a tree now. So now you're going to paint some colors. Now it is important also um, to, once you've created something, is to kind of add the background first. So in this case I'm going to add um, some of this green grass that I have in here and what you actually want to do is kind of come around and create the background color first. Now many times I see students and they go well I'm done there's my green grass. Well I do see in this picture some kind of some hills that are kind of bluish green or a darker green and as you remember from when we've mixed colors before if you add black to a color you can get a darker color of that color so here I've got a darker blue and this is really a nice blue back here and so I can add that in now also watercolor dries very fast and so then once I get the base color down and I've got it the color I want, I can next add some other details, okay? So here I've got some of the base colors going. I'm going to use this one as an example. Here's another landscape. I've created some green area here and some uh, darker green area here. And I mix green with black. You can do this right on your paper. Mix the color right in while it's still wet and that's called wet on wet. So if I've got a green color here and I want to kind of make it a little bit darker, I can dab in just a little bit of black and that's wet on wet. And those colors with some water, you can blend them together and create that wet on wet and darker shade of color. You don't always have to just do it in the tray. You can do it on your paper as well. Just make sure you rinse. Now, if you can see here, this is a dark blue to a light blue. So I can take my blue, get it nice and wet, and in order to get watercolor to spread, 
you do want a wet brush. I do see sometimes students trying to spread with a brush that's dry and that w and it takes so long for your your water your watercolor to spread if it's dry. Now, I am going to just add water at this point so that I can get this dark to light kind of effect. And that's called also a graded wash like I mentioned. All right. Now, I ha this is all dry right here and I have this beautiful grass. Now I can take my smaller brush and kind of create some of those grasses. This is dry now, so I can decide with a small brush with just a little bit of water on there, maybe some greens, some different kinds of greens. I can easily make some yellow greens and some dark blue greens and kind of start in with some branches or grass and things like that. Your trees are as well. This one doesn't have a tree in it, but you can start adding that tree. Okay. Now, also this has some really pretty flowers. I can kind of create those flowers and put those in. And once those dry, maybe I, I can add a little bit of yellow to those to kind of give that whole effect. Okay, so I can add some grasses, I can add some darker greens, I can add my trees in there. Now, another little thing that you can do is, is layering. Okay. So like on this one, I think every year that I do this demo, I add a little bit to this. But I can add more layers to my um, image once things begin to dry. So I can kind of add some real dark leaves to my tree now. Now with a lot of paint, it's dark. With a lot of water, it's light. And you can kind of add those details to it that way. Now, another thing I have noticed is sometimes students will have um, an example of some snow. Now, snow, you think, well, that's there's my snow right there. It's all white. But if you really look at this, page, uh, this picture here in this photograph, it isn't white. This right here is white. This area right here is real bright white, and I would leave that there. But this actually is kind of a blue color. So what I would do is, using just a little bit of water and a tiny bit of blue, I would create this blue area of snow. And if you get a chance to look at the Owl Moon picture, there is uh, the paintings in there, there is a lot of snow. And it's a faint blue because it's reflecting, the snow is something that reflects, since it's white, it reflects a lot of colors. And so colors kind of, um, can be kind of seen in there. Now there is kind of a purpley blue color right in here that I can create. I can mix up in my my dish here. Oops, all out of that one. I'll use from the other pan and I'll get kind of a purpley blue color going. And I can use that right there in my tree line. Create those shadows. While this is really wet, those will kind of just blend in and bleed in. That's called wet on wet, is when you are painting something and you put it on the wet paper and it kind of bleeds and blends together. You get that wet on wet effect. The dry brush and the dry painting is what you do when you layer. You're layering um, new colors on the dry colors to kind of create um, the depth that you're looking for, okay? Like what we talked about here. I'm adding more colors on top of the um, base colors that you start off with. So you're going to start off with some base colors here and kind of get the basic colors in and then you're going to take your small brush and start adding the trees and some of the other details. So that is our basics for watercolor paintings. We will be working on this for a couple weeks. Find your picture draw it out lightly on your paper, just the general shapes, and then you can begin painting using some of the little tips that I showed you today. And then we'll be working on that. Once we're all done here, you can put your paint shirt away. This is going on the drying rack. Jump your water, put your brushes in the um, brush uh, caddy, and these watercolor paints go back in the um, tray. Um, and then once you're all done, ready to go, back to your seat, ready to line up. Thank you.